Jesus never experienced fear any other time in his life. The Bible never records that Jesus ever experienced fear outside of the Garden of Gethsemane here. And so the question here is, why did he experience it now? He had been on a, a ship that almost shipwrecked, uh, one night almost sank. He wasn't afraid then. Nazareth, they tried to throw him over a cliff. He wasn't afraid then. The Pharisees tried to kill him many times. He wasn't afraid then. Why was he afraid now and not those other times? Let me give you several reasons why. And the first is identification as a fellow human. Remember, Jesus is a human being. He was, it's not that he was, he still is. He's the man Christ Jesus. He's fully God, but he's also fully man. And on the earth, even though he was God, he still lived in a physical body. And here's what Hebrews 4 says. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points. Now remember that when you're praying. In all points, he was tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in all things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant in going astray since he himself is also subject to weakness. You realize if Jesus wouldn't have experienced fear on the earth, he couldn't uh, be compassionate for us when we pray. You know, we all experience fear. Every, I experience fear just about every single day. And it's one of the major themes of my prayer life with God is, God, I'm concerned about this. I'm afraid about this. And, and it's an opportunity every day that we have to go before a throne of grace. Aren't you glad it's the throne of grace? Aren't you glad that we don't have to deserve it and we don't have to have our act together to go before God's throne of grace? We can be falling apart and he's great with that because when we go before Jesus and say, Lord, I'm scared, he says, I know exactly what you're talking about. Understand when Jesus, the second reason that Jesus was afraid is he knew everything that was about to happen to him in detail. You know, a lot of us, we fear because of what we don't know. You know, we're getting on an airplane or, or we're going someplace or, or we're thinking about tomorrow and, and we don't know what's about to happen, but we fear. And if there's anything worse than not knowing, it's knowing. Jesus knew every slap, every time they were gonna spit on him, they were gonna pluck his beard out, they were gonna put a crown of thorns on him, they were gonna mock him, they were gonna whip him, they were gonna make him carry his cross, they were gonna nail him to the cross, that he would become sin and sickness, all of the sin of the world, all the sickness of the world would come on his body, the Father would turn away from him and demons would feast on him for several hours. That's why the sky grew black on Friday afternoon before Jesus died. Because God the Father didn't want the world to have to witness what was happening to his son on the cross as he became sin. Jesus knew every detail. And let me say this, when I go back to the point of saying he can sympathize with us, you say, what was Jesus afraid of? He was afraid of rejection. He was afraid of suffering. He was afraid of humiliation. He was afraid of every, he knew every single thing that was about to happen to him. So when we go before Jesus, our high priest in heaven, and we say, Lord, I'm afraid of being rejected by these people. He's, I know exactly what you're talking about. Lord, I'm afraid my family, all, everybody in my family gets this particular disease, and it's genetic, and I'm afraid that I'm, I'm about to get sick too. He, I know exactly what you're talking about. Lord, I'm afraid of pain. I, I know what you're talking about. I'm afraid of poverty. I know, every single thing that we're afraid of, Jesus experienced that fear right here in this moment. There's another reason that Jesus felt fear, and that's because he was under absolute attack by Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane, the spirit of fear, and that's what Satan is. He's the ultimate spirit of fear. Remember in back in Luke chapter four and in Matthew chapter four, it records that there was this, this time when Jesus fasted for 40 days that Satan came to tempt him in the wilderness and Jesus won that battle. And this is Luke 4, 13, interesting. This is about Satan. When the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Now, you can always tell the nature of a person by what they do with vulnerable people. A good person sees someone who's vulnerable and they help them and support them and protect them. That's what Jesus did, that's what good people do. An evil person sees someone vulnerable and they prey upon that person. And Satan's evil. 
And it says that Satan lost the contest in the wilderness, so he left Jesus until he became weak, until there was an opportune time. And here's the opportune time. Jesus is about to die. He's being betrayed by one of his disciples. He's crying out in the garden of Gethsemane and Satan jumps all over him with the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. It's not just an emotion, it's a demon spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God will never use fear in our lives. God will never use fear to lead us or to do anything in our lives, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power. God gives us power and love and a sound mind. Satan not only puts fear on us, he puts fear on us so he can control us. Hebrews chapter two, inasmuch then as the children, that's us, have partaken of flesh and blood, being human, as Jesus likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Jesus died on the cross so he could defeat Satan and take back the power over death because Satan uses the fear of death to control us all of our lives. And you say, well, I've got a phobia. You know, I've got, I've got a particular fear. Almost every fear can be traced back to the fear of death. You say, well, I'm afraid of being poor. Well, most of us are not just afraid of being poor. Poverty can cause death. I mean, it can cause starvation and problems. You say, well, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. No, you're not afraid of heights. You're afraid of, you're afraid of splattering is you're not afraid of heights. You're afraid of falling from heights and dying. You say, well, I'm afraid of bugs. I'm afraid of critters. You're afraid of dying. That's what bugs and critters do. They can kill you. They can bite you and kill you. And so it says that Satan, through the fear of death, holds us in bondage all of our lives. Let me tell you the good news. Jesus died on the cross and defeated Satan in death and rose from the grave. And Jesus said to Mary and Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life and whoever believes in me will never die. Let me tell you, you, if you're a Christian, you can't die. You'll never die. We never, I will never experience death. And I'm not saying that my body one day won't wear out and die. I'm saying the minute my eyes close here, they open there. The minute I stop breathing here, I start breathing there. The minute that my sense is dull here, they come alive there. I will never die. I am a Christian. Jesus defeated.